Hello everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a simulated wooden surface uh, using three different art supplies. We'll use markers here, colored pencil here, and then finally watercolor over here. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this first one. Um, maybe later on zoom in a little closer to show you details, but for now uh, I'm going to just put down a kind of a base layer here. Now with markers uh, any of you who have used them, you'll have noticed that they tend to be a little streaky, leaving these sort of lines that reveal the direction in which you uh, moved the marker. Sometimes that can be a problem, but uh, when you're creating wood, actually, a wooden surface, it's kind of helpful because wooden uh, surfaces, as you know, have this kind of grain of lines that uh, move in a particular uh, direction, in this case, sort of north-south, let's just say. Uh, but you can begin by just putting a, a base layer, keep that marker moving fairly quickly because that keeps the color light. And then what I'm going to do now with the uh, same marker, actually, is start to add detail, uh, but I'm going to use uh, the other tip. Now hopefully you have a marker that has two different tips, uh, and uh, if you don't, you may want to try and get a hold of one if you are trying to do this sort of technique. Now I flipped around to this chisel point which allows me to uh, get a little more detail and I'm going to begin with doing a kind of loose oval shape. One of the nice things about doing a wooden surface is you don't have to be super precise. In fact a wiggly line is pretty helpful. Now notice that as I s start making these concentric circles the sides uh, on the left and right are narrow and it's these far areas that start to stretch out. And you don't, again, you don't have to worry about it being perfect because in real pieces of wood, as I, I even just looked at the hardwood floor in my own house today <laughs> to kind of remind myself, what does real wood look like? Um, so there you go, using reference from the floor of my own house. Uh, but yeah, these uh, as it gets farther away, it, you'll see that line stretching out. Now what happens, I noticed, is that a darker area forms on the exterior of this line. And it sort of fades, it's like gradient as it fades away. So that's a little detail if you really want to try to get that believable wooden surface. Um, add in this sort of darker area that's just on the exterior of these lines and all the way down to the inner uh, circle. You can add just a bit of that. Don't have it on the interior though. It should really only be on the exterior of these shapes. And I'm going to kind of continue with this pattern uh, throughout, but I'll show you one more thing that you can add as detail is uh, a few little short uh, vertical lines, or at least lines that go along with the uh, grain that you've created. Um, of course, there's different types of wood, but it seems to me qu an awful lot of them will have this extra uh, bit of texture that adds to the authenticity of what you're doing. Uh, now, as you see, I put in the word wood here with the letter W, and later on I'm going to add a little more uh, detail to that. But let me go ahead and finish off this first uh, sort of layer of detail. Uh, in time lapse. So there you go. That on its own is um, fairly authentic looking for wood grain. Now what I'm going to try to do is with a second marker, uh, also using the um, chisel point, add slightly darker areas. Now this is a, a bit of a challenge uh, I find with marker uh, to keep it subtle and they do make these sort of blending markers and the people that are really good with markers make uh, great use of that. Me, I'm just sort of going in and trying to uh, keep it light as I add these darker areas. But yeah, I think it is helpful in trying to create an illusion of a wooden surface to have two different uh, levels of darkness and to go in there. Now of course I had created this letter W and I think I'll just go ahead and add in some shadows to make it look as if the letter W has been carved out from the uh, surface of the wood, sort of indented. And much as I would love for this technique to be the two marker method, <laughs> uh, it's actually going to involve a third marker. 
uh, I think, to give it that final uh, touch of authenticity. And for me, that means finding a quite a pale marker that can allow us to uh, get some subtle variation uh, to the surface. And I found a just kind of a pinkish sort of a tone here. When you're trying to create um, a solid looking surface, I find that creating variations of color is the key to making it look solid. And when there's very little variation, it tends to look uh, flat. Of course, a piece of wood is flat, but it won't look quite so solid uh, as when you start to vary. See, now I'm making this area here just a little darker. Uh, and I think you'll agree that when we see a little bit of variety of darks and lights, it just adds to the solidity somehow. It just makes it a look a little more authentic. As you look at real pieces of wood, and rarely is it just one completely solid piece of color. There's going to be slight variations there. And I'm going to try probably going back to my first marker to see if I can get a little more uh, subtlety with uh, the shadow that we have going on here. And let's go ahead then and call this one finished. And I'm going to move on to uh, doing the second one. It's going to be all using uh, colored pencil. Now, colored pencils are great for um, having a very gradual uh, approach. If you're the kind of person who doesn't like to have to um, sort of risk it all in one big um, swipe of the pen, you're going to love colored pencils because it allows you to just gradually build stuff up. And so I'm doing kind of a similar thing here of creating a base layer using a paler color. And um, it should end up fairly similar looking uh, in the end to what we had over here. I think this is one where we do want to do it in time lapse, though you don't want to sit here and watch me <laughs> shade this. And give me a second, I'll finish this in time lapse, then we'll be back to add a little more detail. All right, so as you saw, I was doing a similar thing of keeping the lines moving in this north-south kind of direction um, so as to emulate the uh, grain of the wood. Uh, the thing with colored pencil is that uh, uh, tiny specks of white tend to show through uh, from the paper and uh, beneath, and you don't end up with quite so solid a uh, surface of color as you get when you're uh, working with uh, marker. Um, but the other side of that is that you get incredible subtlety, and, and as I said, uh, you can you can really work quite slowly uh, with colored pencil, and you have control, you know, almost absolute control uh, over each line that you make. I find with marker that uh, there is sort of like make that line and get out of there. You know what I mean? You can't just allow that tip to sit there and soak into the page or it'll get blotchy. Uh, so if you're the kind of person who likes the slow and steady approach, I would uh, highly recommend uh, colored pencil as your method of choice. But again, I have to remember my method I talked about before of the sort of darkened area on the exteriors of each one of these sort of oval shapes that I've been creating. So let me go ahead and uh, continue doing that, and you'll probably also see me adding some of these lines like I was doing over here with colored pencil. When I want the lines to be thin, I try to hold my pencil at a kind of a, a almost 90 degree angle, and that just the very tip of the pencil is touching, and then I can get quite thin lines. If I go low with it, it's going to be more of like shading technique if it's, if it's going more uh, horizontal to the page. All right, let's go ahead and add more of this texture. We'll be, we'll be back to sort of darken things in a little more. All right, so we've got a good, a good base layer of just this single pencil, and now I think it's time to move on to a slightly darker pencil. Uh, again, with color pencils, uh, I just love the degree of control and subtlety. Uh, that you can get uh, into the illustration. Of course, you have to uh, keep sharpening uh, if you want that razor-sharp uh, tip, but that seems a, a small price to pay 
for getting uh, that level of control that you want. I find that you know with the with the marker, you very quickly have built up this very solid looking uh, piece of or you know area of color. Whereas with colored pencil, you really have to keep working at it. So I suppose it takes a bit more patience. You know, there's a danger I think with colored pencil of you thinking, okay, I'm done, and then you come back and look at it later on, and you're like, boy, it looks so washed out. Well, that's because you didn't uh, spend the time needed to really build that color up. And especially like here, where I want there to be light and shadow, uh, I'm going to have to take some time and, and gradually build up uh, the shadow within these areas of the the ooh, <laughs> the ooh letters section of the word wood. Um, and then, yeah, this uh, adding these little bits of extra texture can go a long way. Extra texture? That sounds like an album name. Uh, adding these little bits of uh, texture to the uh, illustration can really help uh, it look much more authentic as a uh, surface piece of wood. Give me another moment of time lapse as I sort of build this up gradually and uh, pronounce it finished when I finally get uh, the dark areas dark enough. Okay, well I think that gets us as far along as I want to. You will notice that it is still paler uh, than the marker version over here. Certainly possible for me to keep working at it and, and layering in the pencil until it's fairly similar, but I think I'll just leave it like this as evidence of the difference between uh, these two art supplies. Well, it's time now to move on to the watercolors. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to uh, creating this one with watercolors. Really quite different. I think uh, uh, markers and color pencil, uh, as different as they are, have a fairly similar feeling. When you're applying uh, watercolor, you kind of have to let go of that idea of control. Uh, at least I find. Uh, and, you know, even though I am kind of moving again in this sort of north-south direction, you can see me just sort of tossing that color in and kind of embracing the lack of control in a way, saying, look, I can't control this perfectly, so let's just drop it in there and, and see what it does. Now, I am diluting my watercolor with quite a lot of water to create this uh, base layer. And um, I'm not concerning myself too much with keeping it absolutely even. Um, I think it's probably going to help to have variations. Uh, you saw me with the colored pencil sort of building up little variations of light and dark. This time it kind of may just happen naturally. Now you, you at first go very quickly uh, throwing down this color. I think I achieved that base layer of color much more quickly than even with the marker, let alone the colored pencil. Uh, but with watercolor, you do have to know to stop and let it dry, and that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Uh, we're not going to watch drying paint. I mean, my channel gets boring sometimes, but not that boring, hopefully. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit pause while this uh, first layer dries. Now, with uh, watercolor more than uh, with the other two, I would say you really have to strategize a little bit in terms of the order in which you do things. I've decided that the smart thing to do now is to first put in this slightly darker shade of brown where the area, you know, in the area of where the letter D is going to be. Because if I try to do this on top of um, some of the fine detail work that I intend to put in both this area and throughout the illustration. It would probably mess up all that detail work if you try to go on top. So a lot of times you're strategizing a little bit with watercolor, say, oh, what is the logical next thing to do? Like, I better go ahead and put in this drop shadow that I've been adding to the edges of these uh, little blocks of wood. Put that in now and then save the detail work uh, for last. And in fact, it may make sense even as I talk about the sort of um, variation of light and dark to put in a few more um, sort of stray north-south areas of darker uh, brown and then leave all of that fine detail work for the very last bit. I'm going to go ahead and just add a tiny bit of drop shadow now, even before this is completely dry. 
um, just to sort of prepare that a bit. Let's go ahead and let this dry. And then I'm going to add just a bit more of uh, this kind of thing, you know, where the it's darker here than it is uh, next, to, you know, in the next segment. I'm going to try to add just a little bit of that before I get into the details. Now, one thing that I suggest doing is having a piece of scrap paper, and I am using a Bristol board here, very helpful with uh, watercolor. Sort of test out the darkness uh, of the color you're going to get before you apply it to the finished uh, product. And uh, yeah, having a piece of scrap paper nearby is not a bad idea. So I'm going to go ahead and, as I said, try to sort of add just a bit of variety uh, to the lights and darks um, fairly randomly. But uh, I think you saw in the colored pencil uh, the surprising degree to which adding slightly different colors uh, does help to make your piece of wood look more like a solid, legitimate surface. More than if you just left a single uh, layer of color there. So yeah, this is basically all I wanted to do with this moment, was to get a little bit of that in there before we move on to the details. Again, I'm going to take a little breather here, let this uh, dry, and then I will be back to add details. All right, so I've moved to really a quite fine-tipped uh, brush here. Uh, to start adding some of the detail. Uh, I was thinking, you know, there's no getting around it that uh, watercolor, I think, does require a certain kind of patience. Um, you know, with the drying time of having to stop periodically and let uh, things dry. Um, it's a, such an odd combination of um, things that you can control and things that you can't control. Um, another aspect of uh, watercolor that I think is different from markers is that the color that you first put down can sometimes uh, dry and become a slightly different color when it's dry. I guess markers do that a bit. But certainly with colored pencil, uh, the color you put down is the color you get uh, immediately. Um, so I do wonder, there's almost, uh, I think personality could come into it in terms of what you prefer. If you're, if you're a person who sort of likes letting go, who likes not knowing exactly how it's going to look immediately, uh, watercolor may be the thing for you. Um, certainly, uh, I think watercolor is not su super well suited for uh, getting those little lines, you know, that I was doing with uh, the colored pencil. Again, you have to maybe switch to a really fine-tipped brush and try to get a really light touch to get lines like that. That sort of, uh, you know, someone more skilled than I can probably get those lines in there in a really nice, uh, thin, delicate way. But I'm finding it challenging. So yeah, that's it's interesting, sort of my... Uh, I had two different goals with this video, I suppose. I did want to focus a lot on the wooden surface idea, but also just comparing uh, different uh, art media. I think when you're trying to figure out what type of artist are you going to be, I think it's helpful to try the different techniques and figure out, you know, what is the one that is uh, best for me? Am I a watercolor person? Am I a colored pencil person? Uh, give yourself some time to try these different uh, techniques and figure figure out what is the one that works best for you. Well, let's go ahead and kick this into time lapse for me to finish off my watercolor version, and then we'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, you can see I couldn't resist going back in with a dark brown colored pencil to kind of heighten the contrast, make this one match up a little better with the other two. It's sort of interesting how similar the three images end up looking given that they were created with completely different 
art supplies. But I always like to end my videos by saying thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like my last summer with Cass, my newest graphic novel, 250 pages of art in this book. Hearing from people who have bought it and enjoyed it, thank you so much for your support. We also have the Two Pencil Method, which has some of the types of lessons that you saw in this video today, and of course Mastering Manga 1, 2, and 3, my books that show you how to draw in a manga style. But I think it's time for me to lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.